All right, guys, I'm back. And there's been some things that have come to my attention that absolutely need to be addressed. But admittedly, I've been out of the loop for a little while. I was celebrating my birthday this past weekend with my family, and I made it a mission to turn off all of my internet to be present with them. But the current narrative of the Pop the Balloon story has gotten so out of hand that it's necessary that I address it. So I'm here to set the record straight. So let's get active. But before we get started, let me just address this right now. This guy does not deserve an apology. See, there's a lot of information that you guys don't know. Previous to distancing myself from him, I confirmed that he lied to me numerous times, not only reducing his credibility towards me, but then also that he is not this reformed member of society, but still an active alleged criminal deviant and alleged deadbeat father. But ensure that you watch the entirety of this video so that you can have all of the proper evidence, receipts, as well as context, so that you have the proper understanding of the true narrative, the real narrative, because there's a lot of information out there that is just untrue. But before I get into all of that, let me provide a brief synopsis because there's many people who watch me that have no idea what's going on. I recently did several videos about a guy who was on the Pop the Balloon dating show, and the story was that allegedly, numerous people called into his place of business to get him fired due to how he acted on the show. He then started to GoFundMe, leveraging this story, which amounted to around $14,000 in donations. As you guys know, my channel's purpose is all about restoring power to men. And I do that in several different ways. But one of the ways is that I highlight stories about men who are going through real adversity and featuring their stories on my platform. So again, I thought that it was deplorable. I thought it was disgusting that this man was canned because of cancel culture. And I uploaded three videos initially to talk through this. But during those videos, I never told my audience to donate to the GoFundMe. But really, I focused my talking points around the injustice that this man suffered. I then decided to reach out to him to do a live stream interview with him that ended up lasting five hours. Now, I got a lot of criticism after interviewing him, but I wanted to give him a fair shot to tell his side of the story. There was no gotcha questions. And in fact, I reached out to him before the interview and went over the things that I wanted to talk about. Now, while I was deeply criticized for even having an interview with him, the interview itself was definitely a success in a sense of it gave me the opportunity to extract a lot of information for him that was used inevitably to poke holes into his story. But again, a little bit more on those holes a little bit later. Now, after this live stream, Abba and Preach, much larger content creators than me, made a damning video questioning the integrity of this guy. Now, I immediately went live to react to that video defending the man because I knew that regardless of his behavior on that show or his past criminal history, he still did not deserve to be fired. After that, another content creator by the name of the Queen of Accountability reached out to me to provide information that demonstrated that clearly he was being deceptive with me about his story. For example, I asked him on the five hour live stream, have you ever been convicted of any harm against women? Is there any stalking within your arrest worker? Your, no, your, your no, warrants, nothing? no, no, no okay. crimes against women, no crimes against children. Okay, so in you other know, words, I, it's not it's not adding up. Is my conclusion no, right it's, here? It, it, it's, it's not adding up because, and obviously, I'm not a good criminal because you see all the charges I get. Every time I do something, I get caught. That was a lie with charges of not only sex trafficking, but also pandering, which is like the cousin of pimping. Now, does this disprove that he was actually fired from his job? No, but it was my first indication of deception. He also lied about the knowledge of him having a son. Do you remember what he said on a live stream when I asked him about his child? Summon him. But he actually does have a kid. He just does. Okay, you got a child now? Okay, now I'm gonna say this. For me to answer that question without destroying lives, I'm gonna say this. If I have a child out there, Summon him. Okay. Summon him. Bring him here. Where is the mother? I haven't heard. I haven't heard anything about anything in years. You know, 
if there's any kids out there that people are stating that are mine, you know, summon him and, and, and rectify that matter. Let's clear all the smoke that's out there. If there is a child out there that is mine, summon him, please. I'm a man that handles his responsibilities. Okay. I love I would love to be a father more than anything on the so, earth. So it sounds like a woman accused you or not, yeah, a woman got pregnant and thought you might be the father. All I can say is if I have a child out there, summon him. Okay. I, I, I don't want to destroy any families. I don't want to destroy any lives. So okay. in order for me to elaborate on this matter more, that's it would absolutely have to happen. Okay. So if there is a child out there, that is mine. Summon him. Well, they've been trying to summon this guy. His alleged son, who he has definitely met, is eight years old. The mother has begged him to take a DNA test for the past eight years to prove his paternity. His birth certificate shows that she named the child after him, Aaron Sloan Jr. But you know what he also shares? His entire face, including that big bright smile. What a beautiful boy that has to deal with being raised without a father's presence. I had no idea that as I defended him, while I utilized stories about my relationship with my father, this guy was actively avoiding taking a DNA test to prove paternity. We watched him throw money up in the club. He claimed that he has 100,000 in the bank. Do what's right. He also lied about his plans for the GoFundMe money. In ridiculous fashion, he posted on his social media the evidence that the GoFundMe account that he had was locked. But underneath that post, he wrote, Black man can't celebrate his birthday now? Really? Underneath the post that your GoFundMe account got locked? And then he writes, how you gonna tell me how to spend my money? As if he's not obligated to spend his money for the purpose he created the GoFundMe for. So we lied about plans for the GoFundMe, but we're all expected to believe that he got fired from his job or that he had a legit job to get fired from. Even before confirming all of these different lies, I was suspicious. Hence why I never said to donate to the GoFundMe to begin with. But at this point, now my suspicion meters are off the charts. And there's other things within that five hour stream that were uncovered, like, you know, when he had first tried to lie about putting the tracker into his ex-girlfriend's car after I pressed him about it. And I was like, how did you know I was outside, right? He said, I put my extra phone tracking you in your car and I left it on record because I was expecting to record you doing something as in cheating on me or like messing around in your car. And I was like, I was done after that. I have never heard of a smartphone in the car. Like how long would a smartphone stay on? I, you know, I don't. those things are gonna overheat after a while. Is it true that you put a smartphone in the car and you press the record button and just threw it back in there. No. Okay. She Blatantly. She's just making that up. At a book in there. Yes. She's making that up. I. Okay. Uh, I. I. Um. Come on. Let's 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 talk about it. A few moments later. I'm trying to see how I can answer this. I did. I I, I had a phone. Man, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to answer this. Honestly, I don't know how to answer this. But no, I, I, I didn't put no, no smartphone. I did have another iPhone that was in her car. I did. I have two phones. Okay. Aaron. No, listen, listen, listen. Let me break it down to you. I had two phones. One phone I do plumbing with, right? The other phone is my personal phone. I did. I did leave. I did leave the phone. I'm trying to. I'm trying to answer this without sounding like a creep. So I'm trying to choose my words carefully you know because okay, they're gonna okay. crucify me so i lied to her i told her i did an airdrop left the phone in there but i didn't i don't even know how to do an airdrop but honestly yes the phone location my location was on i i know she was cheating on me and stuff so i did if it sounds crazy then man whatever and i, I appreciate love. you telling yeah. i appreciate you telling the truth i was i was in love man i it sound like a simp whatever man I was in love. That's what happened. But let's get off of all of the holes that I was able to see through via my five hour live stream. Because at this point in the story, it gets worse. Because I have evidence that he has completely misrepresented himself. Not in the past before he went to jail, but now. 
currently that he's not a reformed member of society that he has led us all to believe. There was a police incident report that was filed April 20th of this year, of 2024. Months before his episode on Pop the Balloon even aired, a woman accused him of sexual assault. Now this woman actually joined the Queen of Accountability stream and recounted this assault. Her recounting it is beyond disturbing and I'm not gonna replay it right now. And guys, listen, you guys already know, I am not a fan of guilty until proven innocent. But again, another piece of information as to who this person actually is and why now I'm considering distancing my brand as well as my community from him. By the way, this is not just a police incident report. The district attorney's office is currently working on pursuing charges against him. And then to top all of this off, I then receive at least seven police incident reports from the past year. Again, this is not before he got locked up. This is within the past year, since 2023, from other women that he attempted relationships with. Now, mind you, these women did not know each other before he went viral, who all claim similar allegations of abuse. The MO is something like, they met, he begins to demonstrate overbearing or stalking behavior, and then when they break up, he goes ballistic. Allegations of destroying their property, and even with one girl, he allegedly removed a garbage disposal from the woman's sink out of spite. Sounds like something a petty plumber would do. With documented text messages of threats to get them fired, which is interesting because that's exactly what he said happened to him in his GoFundMe story. Also, these text messages show that he's threatening his exes with even like releasing revenge corn. Now, I'm not gonna put that picture evidence on the screen for obvious reasons, but again, all of this information is on the Queen of Accountability stream. And if you want information from the source, I suggest that you go watch the content. But let me pause right here and let me just ask you guys, what would have you done if you were in my situation? You've dedicated at least five videos, working 15, maybe even 20 plus hours in total on a mission that you truly believe that you are supporting a man in a very unjust situation. You cross-reference what was said in a live interview, realizing that there's numerous holes in his story putting his integrity completely in question, which in turn puts my credibility at risk. You have evidence to support that he is not a reformed member of society. Would you, would you continue to advocate for him? If he lied to you about all of these very important things, then it is logical that he is probably lying about other things. In fact, could he be lying about the story to begin with? Only a fool continues to believe a story that has no evidence to support it. But even still, I gave him the benefit of the doubt before I came to my final conclusion. I asked him one last time via DMs, give me at least the name of your job. Now, this was my last ditch effort for him to raise his credibility with me. I mean, shit, I could have signed an NDA saying that I wouldn't publish anything publicly, but he told me no, his most ardent defender. Now, listen, to give the audience credit, y'all didn't know any of this or what was exactly going on in my mind at the time, and you shouldn't have. Why? Because I didn't tell you. I chose to not completely eviscerate this guy, putting him on blast because of the magnitude of his dishonesty, including his current criminal allegations. My plan was just to send everyone to the Queen of Accountability stream to receive all of the necessary information. She did the research, she deserved the credit. So at this point, again, after speaking with him one last time, I created my video distancing myself from the situation until he could produce proof that he was fired. But a mistake was in fact made. We alluded to in that video, him possibly not having a license because we couldn't find evidence of it at the time. Now, the Queen of Accountability found it that next morning and posted it to her community chat page, but not a lot of people saw it. And nevertheless, 
he went on a podcast that showed proof of a license which attempted to discredit us while still not providing evidence of the original claim that he was fired. By the way, no one seemed to have noticed within that stream that when he brought up that he had an LLC in New Mexico, his name is Aaron Travon Sloan SR. SR is senior. Domestic Limited Liability Company, State of Incorporation, New Mexico. Hmm. And then he looks like he scrolled down a little bit more so he could show everybody. Aaron Trevon yeah. Sloan, senior. And the address, of course, is blurred out for his safety. And yep, organizer information, all that. He's telling you right there that he acknowledges fatherhood. But he used that Academy Award winning victim narrative about us trying to destroy his life with his past. And that's when the narrative switched on me to jumping the gun to being a backstabber, a traitor, a flip-flopper, a clout chaser, and that I needed to apologize to him. And that's really where everything left off. And you know, the entire story is absolutely incredible and kind of reminds me of like an ancient Greek parable where now I have to vanquish the monster that I helped create. And I helped create him through <laughs> defending him on my platform. But listen, guys, I want you guys to understand is that I'm pretty much a one-man show here. I'm not a journalist and I'm damn sure not perfect. I will make mistakes. It actually just happened to Abba and Preach, specifically Abba, when they did that whole fresh and fit, Daisy Fit Chen explosion and had a conversation with the young lady. And then eventually the young lady started to have advances towards Abba and he had to <laughs> come back later and say, hey guys, listen, she may not be as believable as what I thought before. But I will tell you guys what, to receive messages that I wish that you died from cancer to messages that I should have died with my father is sick. But do understand that I will not be discouraged. Hate cannot break me. I am way too strong for that. And situations like this are only gonna make me stronger. I will stop at nothing to create impact. I remain committed to the mission and the purpose of this channel. I will not be silenced. I will speak up for what I believe in. I built five years of equity on this platform doing exactly just that. But I've learned that when you're in the spotlight, while at times it'll shine, it may also burn. Yet I'm even more committed to a set of values anchored in integrity as well as accountability. And I've been affirmed by the countless messages from both men and women thanking me for my content over the years, that it has changed some component of their life. I will, however, change the processes around defending somebody. It's like, you can have an interview with somebody, but when you get to defending someone, you need to do the prior due diligence beforehand into exactly who they are. Now, this is the last time that I plan on addressing this topic as I'm going to move on. Hopefully this video resonates with you and gives you the accurate reality regarding this narrative. But this right here is the narrative. This is the reality. Until next time, YouTube.